In today's message, I want to address a common struggle many of us face. Wasting time. We live in a fast-paced world where time is a precious commodity. Yet we often find ourselves squandering it on activities that don't align with our goals and dreams. But rest assured, you're not alone in this struggle. I've been there myself, and I understand how frustrating it can be to feel stagnant in your progress. However, I bring good news. By tuning into this message, you can turn the tide and utilize your time more efficiently to reach your goals. So, if you're ready to learn how to maximize your time and achieve your aspirations, then keep reading. Let's delve into the five strategies for avoiding time wastage and realizing your objectives, starting with number five. The fifth strategy to avoid wasting time and achieve your goals is eliminating distractions. You might be wondering, how can seemingly insignificant distractions impede our progress? But my friends, distractions are like tiny droplets of water that can erode even the sturdiest of rocks over time. They may appear harmless initially, but they can have a significant impact on our lives and hinder our ability to achieve our dreams. So, what exactly are distractions? Distractions come in various forms. Incessant notifications on our phones, a constant stream of emails, talkative co-workers, or even our own wandering thoughts. While these distractions may seem innocuous, they consume a considerable amount of our time and energy, leaving us with little to no time to focus on our goals. Think about it. How often have you sat down to work on an important task only to find yourself mindlessly scrolling through social media or checking emails every few minutes? These distractions not only waste our time, but also prevent us from fully immersing ourselves in the task at hand, thereby hampering our productivity and progress. Now, how do we eliminate distractions and make the most of our time? The first step is identifying the distractions in our lives. Take a moment to reflect on your daily routine and pinpoint the things that tend to divert your attention. Once identified, it's time to take action. The second step is setting boundaries. In a world inundated with information and demands for our attention, it's imperative to establish boundaries and safeguard our time. This could entail disabling notifications on your phone, designating specific times to check emails, or politely informing talkative co-workers of your need to focus on work. The third step is prioritization. Often, we fall into the trap of busyness without productivity. We must learn to prioritize tasks and concentrate on those that propel us toward our goals. This means saying no to tasks or activities that don't align with our priorities and delegating or outsourcing non-essential tasks. The fourth step is creating a conducive environment. Our surroundings significantly influence our ability to focus and be productive. Ensure your workspace is clean, organized, and free from distractions. Whether it's finding a quiet corner in a coffee shop, working in a separate room at home, or investing in noise-canceling headphones, create an environment conducive to productivity. Lastly, the fifth step is practicing mindfulness. Our minds are powerful, but they can also be our greatest adversaries. We must learn to be present and mindful of our thoughts. When distractions arise, acknowledge them, let them go, and refocus on the task at hand. While challenging, with practice, we can train our minds to be more focused and less susceptible to distractions. My friends, eliminating distractions isn't easy but it's essential if we want to achieve our goals. We must be intentional with our time and learn to protect it. Remember, time is our most valuable asset, and we cannot afford to squander it on distractions. Moving on to number four. We all have the same 24 hours in a day, yet some seem to accomplish so much while others struggle to make progress. So, what's the secret? How do we make the most of our time and achieve our goals? Well, my friends, the answer lies in the fourth strategy to avoid wasting time and achieve your goals. Avoiding multitasking. Now some of you might believe multitasking is the key to productivity. However, it's quite the contrary. In fact, multitasking is one of the biggest time wasters and impediments to goal achievement. Allow me to explain why. When we attempt to juggle multiple tasks simultaneously, our attention becomes divided, preventing us from fully focusing on any one task. As a result, our efforts are diluted, and we fail to produce our best work. While multitasking may create an illusion of productivity, it often leads to inefficiency and subpar results. The human brain isn't designed to handle multiple tasks concurrently. We function best when we concentrate on one task at a time. Have you ever tried to hold a conversation while scrolling through your phone or working on a project? 
Chances are, you missed crucial details or made mistakes. This is because our brains struggle to process and retain information when multitasking. So, what's the solution? How do we avoid multitasking and optimize our time? The first step is prioritization. Make a list of tasks and rank them based on importance. Focus on the most critical tasks first to avoid getting sidetracked by less significant ones. Next, allocate specific blocks of time for each task. By dedicating your full attention to one task at a time, you'll enhance your focus and productivity. Additionally, create a conducive work environment by minimizing distractions and taking periodic breaks to recharge your mind. Learning to say no is also crucial in managing your time effectively. Don't overcommit yourself. Prioritize your goals and decline tasks that don't align with them. While it may be challenging initially, saying no will save you time and energy in the long run. My friends, avoiding multitasking isn't just about being more productive, it is also about being more present. When we constantly multitask, we are not fully present in the moment. We miss out on important details, experiences, and connections with others. By focusing on one task at a time, we can fully immerse ourselves in the present and make the most of every moment. I am grateful for the opportunity to share with you the number three way to not waste time and achieve your goals, and that is by creating a schedule. Now, I know what some of you may be thinking. A schedule? That sounds boring and restrictive. But let me tell you, my friends, a schedule is one of the most powerful tools you can use to take control of your life and achieve your dreams. You see, time is the most precious resource we have. It is the one thing that we cannot buy more of, no matter how much money we have. And yet, so many of us waste this precious resource without even realizing it. We get caught up in the day-to-day -day tasks and distractions, and before we know it, another day has gone by, and we haven't made any progress towards our goals. But with a schedule, you can change that. A schedule allows you to prioritize your time and make sure that you are spending it on the things that truly matter to you. It is a roadmap for your day, a guide that keeps you focused and on track towards your goals. Now creating a schedule may seem like a daunting task, but I assure you, it is not as complicated as it may seem. Let me share with you some simple steps to help you create a schedule that works for you. First and foremost, you need to have a clear understanding of your goals. What is it that you want to achieve? What are your long-term and short-term goals? Having a clear vision of your goals will help you determine how you should be spending your time. Next, make a list of all the tasks and activities that you need to do on a daily or weekly basis. This could include work, household chores, exercise, family time, etc. Be specific and write down everything that takes up your time. Now here comes the crucial part. Prioritize. Look at your list and identify the tasks that are essential for you to achieve your goals. These are your high priority tasks. Then, identify the tasks that are not as important and can be done at a later time. These are your low priority tasks. Once you have your high priority tasks, allocate specific time slots in your schedule for each of them. This will ensure that you are dedicating your most productive hours to the tasks that will bring you closer to your goals. But remember, it is also important to schedule in breaks and downtime. We all need time to rest and recharge, and neglecting this can lead to burnout and decreased productivity. So make sure to schedule in breaks and time for self-care as well. Now, I know that life can be unpredictable, and things don't always go according to plan. That's why it's essential to be flexible with your schedule. Don't beat yourself up if you can't stick to it 100%. Instead, review and adjust your schedule as needed to make sure it is still serving its purpose, helping you achieve your goals. Another important aspect of creating a schedule is to eliminate distractions. In today's world, we are bombarded with distractions. Social media, TV, emails, you name it. These distractions can eat up a significant chunk of our time if we let them. So make a conscious effort to limit your exposure to distractions. Set specific times for checking emails or scrolling through social media, and stick to it. Lastly, I want to stress the importance of being consistent with your schedule. It's not enough to create a schedule, you must also follow it consistently. Consistency is key to achieving success in any area of life. So make a commitment to yourself to stick to your schedule and make it a daily habit. My friends, creating a schedule is not about restricting yourself or limiting your freedom. It is about taking control of your time and using it wisely to achieve your goals. It is about being intentional with your actions 
and making sure that each day brings you closer to the life you desire. Now, on to number two. As I mentioned earlier, we all have the same 24 hours in a day, yet some people seem to accomplish so much, while others struggle to even get through their to-do list. What sets these successful individuals apart? It's their ability to prioritize their tasks. You see, time is a finite resource. Once it's gone, we can never get it back. And that's why it is crucial to make the most out of every moment we have. Time management is not about doing more in less time, but it's about doing the right things at the right time. So what does it mean to prioritize tasks? It means understanding the difference between what is urgent and what is important. Urgent tasks demand immediate attention, while important tasks contribute to our long-term goals and overall success. Often, urgent tasks are not necessarily important, and important tasks are not always urgent. Let me give you an example. Imagine you have a deadline for a project at work. That project is important because it will contribute to your career growth and success. However, your friend calls and invites you to a party which is happening the same night as your project. Deadline. Attending the party may seem urgent, but it is not as important as completing your project. By prioritizing your tasks, you will make the right decision and focus on what truly matters. Now, I know what some of you may be thinking. But Jim, I have so many things to do, and they all seem important. How do I prioritize them? Well, my friends, that's where the magic of goal setting comes in. You see, when we have clear goals, it becomes easier to prioritize our tasks. Our goals act as a compass, guiding us towards what is truly important and helping us filter out the noise and distractions. So if you haven't already, take some time to sit down and define your goals. What do you want to achieve in your personal and professional life? What are your long-term and short-term goals? Once you have a clear vision of your goals, you can start prioritizing your tasks accordingly. Another crucial aspect of prioritizing tasks is learning to say no. Many of us struggle with this myself included. We want to be helpful and please everyone, but in the process, we end up taking on more than we can handle, and before we know it, we're overwhelmed and stressed out. It's important to remember that saying no to certain tasks or commitments does not make us selfish or unhelpful. It simply means we are prioritizing our time and energy towards what truly matters. Now, I want to share with you a simple yet effective technique that has helped me prioritize my tasks and achieve my goals. It's called the Eisenhower Matrix, named after President Dwight D. Eisenhower, who was known for his exceptional time management skills. The Eisenhower Matrix is a four-quadrant grid that helps us categorize our tasks based on their urgency and importance. The first quadrant is for tasks that are both urgent and important. These are the tasks that require our immediate attention, and we should focus on completing them as soon as possible. The second quadrant is for tasks that are important, but not urgent. These are the tasks that contribute to our long-term goals and require planning and preparation. It's important not to neglect these tasks, as they are crucial for our success. The third quadrant is for tasks that are urgent but not important. These are the tasks that often distract us and take up our time, but they do not contribute to our goals. It's crucial to delegate or eliminate these tasks as much as possible. And finally, the fourth quadrant is for tasks that are neither urgent nor important. These are the tasks that we should avoid altogether, as they are simply time wasters. By using the Eisenhower Matrix, we can prioritize our tasks and focus on what truly matters. It helps us avoid the trap of busy work and ensures that we are spending our time and energy on tasks that align with our goals. My friends, prioritizing tasks is a skill that requires practice and discipline. It's not something that we can master overnight. But with persistence and determination, we can become experts at it and the rewards are immense. By prioritizing our tasks, we can achieve our goals, reduce stress, and have more time for the things that truly matter, such as spending time with our loved ones and pursuing our passions. And now, the one we've been waiting for. The number one way to not waste time and achieve your goals is by setting clear and specific goals. We all have dreams and aspirations, but without clear and specific goals, they will remain just that. Dreams. Goals are the roadmap to success. They give us direction and purpose. As the saying goes, if you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. But do you really want to leave your life up to chance? Do you want to look back on your life and wonder what could have been if only you had set clear and specific goals? I don't think so. And that's why I'm here today to share with you the power of goal setting. 
You see, goals are not just wishes or hopes. They are concrete targets that we set for ourselves. They give us something to strive for, something to work towards. And the best part about goals is that they are completely within our control. We have the power to decide what we want to achieve and how we are going to achieve it. But let me tell you, setting clear and specific goals is not an easy task. It requires discipline, focus, and determination. It's not enough to say, I want to be successful, or I want to be rich. Those are vague and ambiguous statements that will not lead you to success. You need to be specific. You need to know exactly what you want and how you're going to get there. So how do you set clear and specific goals? The first step is to identify what you truly want in life. This may seem like a simple task, but many people struggle with it. Ask yourself, what do you want to achieve? What do you want to experience? What do you want to have? And most importantly, why do you want these things? Your why is what will drive you towards your goals. Once you have identified your desires, it's time to make them specific. Instead of saying, I want to be successful, say, I want to be the CEO of a Fortune 500 company. Instead of saying, I want to be rich, say, I want to have a net worth of $1 million by the age of 35. See the difference? The more specific you are, the clearer your target becomes. But setting clear and specific goals is just the first step. The next step is to write them down. I cannot stress enough the importance of writing down your goals. This simple act turns your desires into tangible targets. It also allows you to revisit and revise your goals as you progress towards them. Now I know what some of you may be thinking. But Jim, what if I don't achieve my goals? Won't that be a waste of time? My answer to that is this. It's better to have a target and miss it than to have no target at all. You see, even if you don't achieve your goals exactly as you planned, the process of working towards them will lead you to growth and progress. And that, my friends, is never a waste of time. But let's not focus on the negative. Let's focus on the positive. Let's focus on the fact that by setting clear and specific goals, you are increasing your chances of success exponentially. You are giving yourself a roadmap to follow, a plan of action to take. And with each step you take towards your goals, you are building momentum and creating a habit of success. Another important aspect of setting clear and specific goals is to make them measurable. This means attaching a timeline or a deadline to your goals. For example, instead of saying, I want to lose weight, say, I want to lose 20 low bees in 3 months. This gives you a specific target to work towards and holds you accountable to a timeline. Now, I must warn you, setting clear and specific goals is not a one-time thing. It requires continuous evaluation and adjustment. As you progress towards your goals, you may encounter obstacles or realize that your goals need to be revised. And that's okay. The key is to constantly reassess and make necessary changes to stay on track towards your ultimate desires. And finally, the most important aspect of setting clear and specific goals is to take action. Your goals will remain just words on a piece of paper if you don't take action towards them. As the saying goes, a goal without a plan is just a wish. So make a plan and then take massive action towards your goals. Don't wait for the perfect moment because it will never come. The perfect moment is now. In closing, remember, your goals are within your control. They give you direction and purpose. And they are the key to your success. So take the time to identify your desires, make them specific, write them down, make them measurable, and take massive action towards them. And I promise you, the journey towards your goals will be one of growth, progress, and success. Thank you. In today's message, I want to talk to you about a topic that is crucial for success in all areas of life. Self-confidence. It's something that we all struggle with at some point in our lives, whether it's in our personal relationships, our careers, or even just our day-to-day -day interactions with others. But the good news is, you are not alone in this struggle. I've seen it time and time again where people let their lack of self-confidence hold them back from reaching their full potential. And I'm here to tell you that it doesn't have to be that way. I've spent decades studying and teaching the principles of personal development, and I can confidently say that mastering self-confidence is a skill that can be learned and cultivated. In this video, I'm going to share with you five ways to do just that. So if you're tired of feeling insecure and unsure of yourself, if you're ready to take control of your life and achieve your goals with unwavering confidence, then this message is for you. By the end of this video, you will have the tools and strategies to turn your self-confidence around and become the best version of yourself. Let's get started.
starting with number five, which is mastering self-confidence by taking care of yourself. Self-confidence is not something that can be achieved overnight. It is a journey that requires dedication, self-awareness, and most importantly, self-care. Let me tell you a story. When I was young, I lacked self-confidence. I was constantly comparing myself to others and doubting my abilities. But then I realized that I was neglecting the most important person in my life. Myself. I was not taking care of myself physically, mentally, and emotionally. And that's when I understood that self-care is the foundation of self-confidence. So how can we take care of ourselves to boost our self-confidence? Let me share with you the four pillars of self-care. The first pillar is physical self-care. Our bodies are our temples, and we must treat them with love and respect. This means nourishing our bodies with healthy food, staying active, and getting enough rest. When we take care of our physical well-being, we feel more energized, confident, and ready to take on any challenge that comes our way. The second pillar is mental self-care. Our minds are powerful, and we must learn to tame them. Negative self-talk and limiting beliefs can hold us back from reaching our full potential. That's why it is crucial to practice self-awareness and mindfulness. Be aware of your thoughts and replace any negative ones with positive affirmations. Believe in yourself, and you will see a significant improvement in your self-confidence. The third pillar is emotional self-care. Our emotions play a significant role in our overall well-being. It is essential to acknowledge and process our emotions, whether they are positive or negative. Find healthy ways to express your emotions, such as journaling, talking to a friend, or seeking professional help if needed. When we take care of our emotional well-being, we become more resilient and confident in handling any situation that comes our way. The fourth and final pillar is spiritual self-care. Spiritual self-care is about finding inner peace and purpose in life. It could be through meditation, spending time in nature, or practicing gratitude. When we connect with our inner selves and find meaning in our lives, we become more confident and fulfilled individuals. So my friends, these are the four pillars of self-care that will lead you to master self-confidence. But remember, self-care is not a one-time thing. It is an ongoing process that requires consistent effort and dedication. Make it a priority to take care of yourself every day. Now let me leave you with some practical tips to incorporate self-care into your daily routine. Firstly, schedule time for self-care. Just like any other important task, make it a point to set aside time for yourself every day. It could be as simple as taking a walk, reading a book, or indulging in a hobby. Secondly, learn to say no. We often feel guilty for saying no to others, but it is crucial to prioritize our well-being. If something does not align with your values or drains your energy, it's okay to decline. Lastly, surround yourself with positive and supportive people. The people we surround ourselves with can have a significant impact on our self-confidence. So choose your company wisely and spend time with those who uplift and encourage you. Which leads us to number four, which is mastering self-confidence by surrounding yourself with positive people. Now you may be wondering, why is this so important? Well, let me tell you, the people you surround yourself with have a huge impact on your mindset, your thoughts, and ultimately, your level of self-confidence. Think about it. If you are constantly surrounded by negative people who are always complaining, doubting themselves and others, how do you think that will affect your own thoughts and beliefs? It's like a virus slowly infecting your mind and making you doubt yourself as well. On the other hand, if you surround yourself with positive uplifting people who believe in themselves and in you, how do you think that will impact your own mindset? It's like a breath of fresh air, filling you with positivity and self-assurance. Now I'm not saying that you should only surround yourself with people who constantly tell you how amazing you are. That's not what true positivity is about. It's about surrounding yourself with people who genuinely care for you, who support you, and who believe in your potential. These are the people who will lift you up when you are feeling down, who will remind you of your strengths when you are doubting yourself, and who will push you to be the best version of yourself. But let's be real. Sometimes it's not easy to find these kinds of people. We live in a world where negativity seems to be the norm. So what can we do to surround ourselves with positive people? Firstly, we need to be aware of the people we are currently surrounding ourselves with. Are they adding value to our lives, or are they bringing us down? If it's the latter, it may be time to reevaluate those relationships. It's okay to distance yourself from negative people, 
even if they are family or longtime friends. Remember, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with, so choose wisely. Secondly, seek out positive people. They are out there, I promise you. Join groups or communities that align with your interests and values. Attend events or conferences where you can meet like-minded individuals. And when you do meet someone who radiates positivity, don't be afraid to strike up a conversation and get to know them. You never know, they could become a great friend and a positive influence in your life. And finally, be a positive person yourself. The Law of Attraction states that like attracts like. So if you want to surround yourself with positive people, you need to be a positive person yourself. Be kind, be uplifting, and be supportive of others. Not only will this attract positive people into your life, but it will also make you feel good about yourself and boost your own self-confidence. Which leads us to number three, which is mastering self-confidence by learning from failures. Now I know what you may be thinking. Failures? How do failures help us build self-confidence? But let me tell you, my friends, failures are not something to be feared. In fact, they are our greatest teachers. You see, failure is not the opposite of success. It is a part of success. It is an essential ingredient in the recipe for success. Think about it. Every successful person you know has faced failure at some point in their journey. But what sets them apart is how they handle those failures. They don't let failures define them or discourage them. Instead, they use them as stepping stones to reach their goals. They learn from their mistakes, they adapt, and they keep moving forward. And that, my friends, is the key to mastering self-confidence. When we learn from our failures, we gain valuable insights about ourselves and our abilities. We learn what works and what doesn't. We learn our strengths and weaknesses. And most importantly, we learn that failure is not the end, but an opportunity to grow and improve. Now I know it's not easy to face failures. It can be a blow to our self-confidence and leave us feeling defeated. But the truth is, failure is inevitable. It is a part of life. And the sooner we accept that, the sooner we can learn from it and use it to our advantage. So what are some practical ways to learn from failures and use them to boost our self-confidence? Let me share with you three steps that have helped me and countless others on our journey to success. Firstly, we must change our perception of failure. Instead of seeing it as something negative, we must view it as a learning opportunity. We must shift our mindset from I failed to I learned. This simple change in perspective can make all the difference. It allows us to see failures as a necessary part of our growth and development. Secondly, we must take responsibility for our failures. It's easy to blame external factors or other people for our failures. But the truth is, we are in control of our actions and decisions. And when we take responsibility, we also take back the power to change and improve. We must be willing to own up to our mistakes and learn from them. And lastly, we must have a growth mindset. This means believing that our abilities and intelligence can be developed through hard work and dedication. When we have a growth mindset, we see failures as opportunities to learn and improve, rather than a reflection of our worth or capabilities. My friends, learning from failures is not a one-time thing. It is an ongoing process. We will continue to face failures throughout our lives. But it is how we respond to them that matters. And as we continue to learn and grow, we will see our self-confidence soar to new heights. Which leads us to number two, which is mastering self-confidence by setting achievable goals. Now I know what some of you may be thinking. Why are we talking about goals when we're supposed to be talking about confidence? Well, my friends, let me tell you this. Setting achievable goals is the foundation of building self-confidence. It is the key to unlocking your true potential and unleashing the power within you. You see, self-confidence is not something that you were born with. It is not a trait that some people have and others don't. Self-confidence is a skill that can be learned and developed. And just like any other skill, it requires practice, dedication, and a clear plan of action. And that is where setting achievable goals comes into play. Let me ask you this. Have you ever felt lost, unmotivated, or unsure of yourself? Have you ever looked at successful people and wondered how they got to where they are today? Well, let me tell you a little secret. They didn't get there by chance. They got there by setting achievable goals and working towards them every single day. Setting achievable goals gives you a sense of direction. It helps you focus your energy and efforts towards something that is meaningful and important to you. It gives you a purpose and a reason to wake up every morning with a fire in your belly. And when you have a clear goal in mind, 
You will be amazed at how confident and determined you become. But here's the catch. Your goals need to be achievable. They need to be realistic and within your reach. I'm not saying that you shouldn't dream big, but your goals should be something that you can actually work towards and achieve. Setting unrealistic goals will only lead to disappointment and demotivation. So be honest with yourself and set goals that are challenging yet attainable. Now, let me share with you a simple yet effective method for setting achievable goals. It's called the SMART method. SMART stands for Specific, Measurable, Achievable, Relevant, and Time-Bound. First and foremost, your goals should be specific. This means that they should be clearly defined and well-defined. For example, instead of saying, I want to be successful, be specific and say, I want to start my own business and make a profit of $100,000 in the next two years. Next, your goal should be measurable. This means that you should be able to track your progress and see how far you've come. Going back to our previous example, you can measure your progress by tracking your sales and profits each month. Thirdly, your goals should be achievable. As I mentioned earlier, your goals should be challenging yet attainable. Don't set yourself up for failure by setting unrealistic goals. Start small and work your way up. Moving on, your goals should also be relevant. This means that they should align with your values, beliefs, and long-term vision. If your goals are not relevant to your overall purpose, you will struggle to stay motivated and committed. Lastly, your goals should be time-bound. This means that you should have a deadline for when you want to achieve your goal. Having a timeline creates a sense of urgency and helps you stay focused and on track. Now, setting achievable goals is just the first step. The real work begins when you start taking action towards those goals. And let me tell you, the journey towards achieving your goals will not be easy. There will be obstacles, challenges, and setbacks. But remember, every time you overcome a hurdle, your confidence grows stronger. Which leads us to number one, which is mastering self-confidence by practicing self-affirmations. Now some of you may be wondering, what are self-affirmations? Simply put, they are positive statements that we repeat to ourselves in order to reprogram our subconscious mind. You see, our minds are like a garden, and the thoughts we plant in it will determine the fruits we harvest. If we constantly plant seeds of self-doubt and negativity, we will reap a harvest of insecurity and low self-esteem. But if we plant seeds of self-love and positivity, we will reap a bountiful harvest of confidence and self-assurance. So why are self-affirmations so powerful? It's because our subconscious mind cannot differentiate between what is real and what is imagined. When we repeat positive statements to ourselves, our mind starts to believe them, and our actions align with our beliefs. It's like programming a computer. The more we input positive affirmations, the more our mind will start to operate in a positive manner. Now I know some of you may be thinking, but Jim, I don't believe in myself. How can I say these positive statements and expect them to work? And my answer to that is, you have to start somewhere. Believe it or not, self-confidence is not something that comes naturally to most people. It is a skill that can be learned and mastered through consistent practice. And that's where self-affirmations come in. Think of it this way. If you wanted to become a great athlete, you wouldn't just sit on the couch and expect to become one. You would have to put in the work, practice every day, and eventually, you would see results. The same goes for self-confidence. You have to put in the work and practice self-affirmations every day. Now let's talk about how to create effective self-affirmations. The first step is to identify your limiting beliefs. These are the negative thoughts that hold you back and make you doubt yourself. Once you have identified them, you can start to create positive statements that counteract those beliefs. For example, if you believe that you are not smart enough, your affirmation could be, I am intelligent and capable of achieving anything I set my mind to. The key is to make your affirmations personal, present tense, and positive. Use words like I am or I can to make them more powerful. And don't just say them, feel them. Imagine yourself as the confident person you want to become and say your affirmations with conviction. Now, I want to address a common misconception about self-affirmations. Some people think that by saying positive statements, they are denying reality. But that's not true. Self-affirmations are not about denying your current circumstances. They are about creating a new reality for yourself. They are about building a strong foundation of self-belief that will help you overcome any obstacles that come your way. I also want to emphasize the importance of consistency. Just like with any other skill, you have to practice self-affirmations every day. 
Make it a part of your daily routine. Say them in the morning when you wake up and before you go to bed at night. And don't just limit yourself to saying them out loud. Write them down, post them on your mirror, or carry them with you throughout the day. The more you expose yourself to these positive statements, the more they will become ingrained in your mind. Now I want to share with you a personal story about the power of self-affirmations. When I was starting my career, I had a lot of self-doubt and fear of failure. But I started practicing self-affirmations every day, and slowly but surely, my confidence grew. I went from being a shy and insecure young man, to a successful entrepreneur and motivational speaker. And it all started with the power of self-affirmations. As I always say, the greatest gift you can give yourself is a healthy self-image. And the greatest gift you can give others is a positive example. So let's lead by example and master self-confidence through the practice of self-affirmations. Thank you. Today, I'd like to discuss something crucial for success in any aspect of life. Mindset. In today's fast-paced world, it's easy to get caught up in chaos and lose sight of our thoughts and beliefs. However, your mindset is the foundation of everything you do. It determines your actions, decisions, and ultimately your results. That's why in this video, I want to share with you five powerful ways to master your mindset and achieve the success you desire. I understand that many of you may feel overwhelmed, stuck, or even defeated by your current mindset. But I want you to know that you are not alone. We all face challenges and obstacles when it comes to our mindset. The good news is, we have the power to change it. By listening to this message and implementing these five strategies, you can turn things around and create a powerful mindset that will lead you to success. Whether you're an entrepreneur, a student, a parent, or anyone striving for personal growth, this video is for you. Are you ready to take control of your mindset and transform your life? Then let's dive in and discover the five ways to master your mindset. Remember, your mindset is the key to unlocking your full potential. Let's get started. Starting with number five. The fifth way to master your mindset is practicing gratitude. As a personal development expert, I've seen time and time again the power of gratitude in transforming individuals into their best selves. It is a simple yet profound practice that can bring about immense joy, peace, and success in our lives. But before we dive into the power of gratitude, let me ask you this. How many of you woke up this morning feeling grateful for the gift of another day? How many of you took a moment to appreciate the roof over your head, the food on your table, and the people in your life who love and support you? Gratitude is not just a feeling, it is a mindset. It is a way of looking at the world and finding the good in every situation. Now I know what some of you may be thinking. It's easy to be grateful when everything is going well. But what about when life throws us a curveball? When we face challenges and setbacks, it can be difficult to find anything to be grateful for. But I want to challenge you to see gratitude as a tool to help you overcome those obstacles and come out stronger on the other side. Gratitude is not about denying our problems or pretending they don't exist. It is about shifting our perspective and finding the lessons and blessings in every situation. As the saying goes, what you focus on expands. When we focus on the negative, we only attract more negativity into our lives. But when we choose to focus on the positive, we invite more positivity and abundance into our lives. So how do we practice gratitude in our daily lives? It starts with being mindful and present in the moment. We live in a fast-paced world where we are constantly bombarded with distractions. We are always thinking about the next task, the next goal, the next thing we want to achieve. But in doing so, we often forget to appreciate the present moment. We forget to be grateful for what we have right now. I want to share with you a simple but powerful practice that has transformed my life. Keeping a gratitude journal. Every day, take a few minutes to write down at least three things you are grateful for. It could be something as small as a good cup of coffee or something as big as your health. The key is to focus on the feeling of gratitude as you write it down. This simple practice will not only help you cultivate a grateful mindset, but will also serve as a reminder of all the good in your life when you are feeling down. Another way to practice gratitude is by expressing it to others. How often do we take the people in our lives for granted? We assume they know how much we appreciate them, but how often do we actually tell them? Take the time to express your gratitude to those who have made a positive impact in your life. It could be a simple thank you note, a heartfelt conversation, or a small gesture of kindness. Not only will it make their day, but it will also deepen your relationships and bring more love and positivity into your life. 
Now let's address the elephant in the room. What about when things are not going well? When we are facing challenges and struggles, it can be difficult to find anything to be grateful for. But I want to remind you that even in our darkest moments, there is always something to be grateful for. It could be the lessons we are learning, the strength we are building, or the support of our loved ones. As the saying goes, in every negative, there is a positive waiting to be found. Practicing gratitude also helps us cultivate a mindset of abundance. When we are grateful for what we have, we are sending a message to the universe that we are content and fulfilled. And in return, the universe responds by bringing more blessings into our lives. It is a powerful cycle that can help us attract more success, happiness, and abundance into our lives. Now I want to talk to you about the fourth way to master your mindset, by embracing failure. I know what you might be thinking. Why would anyone want to embrace failure? We have been conditioned to fear failure, to avoid it at all costs. But I am here to tell you that failure is not something to be feared, but rather something to be embraced. Why? Because failure is a necessary part of the journey toward success. Think about it. Every successful person you know has failed at some point in their lives. Thomas Edison failed over a thousand times before he invented the light bulb. Walt Disney was fired from a newspaper for lacking creativity. Oprah Winfrey was told she was unfit for TV before becoming one of the most influential media personalities in the world. These individuals did not let failure stop them. They used it as fuel to propel them toward their dreams. Failure is not the opposite of success. It is a stepping stone toward it. It teaches us valuable lessons and helps us grow and improve. But in order to embrace failure, we must first change our perspective on it. We must see it as an opportunity rather than a setback. One way to do this is by reframing our thoughts. Instead of saying, I failed, say, I learned. Instead of seeing failure as the end, see it as a new beginning. This shift in mindset can make all the difference in how we handle failure and use it to our advantage. Another way to embrace failure is by understanding that it is a natural part of the learning process. Just like a child learning to walk, we must stumble and fall before we can walk with confidence. In the same way, we must fail before we can succeed. Failure is not a sign of weakness, but a sign of growth and progress. Moreover, failure allows us to push ourselves out of our comfort zones and take risks. It forces us to think outside the box and come up with new solutions. As the saying goes, if you want something you've never had, you must be willing to do something you've never done. Failure is a necessary ingredient in the recipe for success. But perhaps the most important reason to embrace failure is that it builds resilience. In life, we will face many challenges and setbacks, but it is our ability to bounce back from them that will determine our success. Resilience is like a muscle. The more we use it, the stronger it becomes. And failure is the perfect opportunity to flex that muscle and build our resilience. So my friends, I urge you to embrace failure. Do not let it discourage you or hold you back. Instead, use it as a tool to propel you toward your goals and dreams. As Winston Churchill once said, Success is not final, failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. Now I want to leave you with a few practical tips on how to embrace failure and use it to your advantage. Reframe your thoughts. Instead of seeing failure as a negative, see it as an opportunity to learn and grow. Learn from your mistakes. Take the time to reflect on your failures and identify what went wrong. Use this knowledge to improve and do better next time. Keep a positive attitude. It can be easy to get discouraged when we fail, but it is important to maintain a positive attitude. Remember, failure is not the end. It is just a temporary setback. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Sometimes we need a fresh perspective to see things in a different light. Don't be afraid to reach out to others for advice and support. Now on to number three. The third way to master your mindset is by surrounding yourself with positive influences. Have you ever heard the saying, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with? Well, it's true. The people we surround ourselves with have a huge impact on our thoughts, beliefs, and actions. They can either lift us up or bring us down. That's why it's crucial to carefully choose the people we allow into our lives. We are all influenced by our environment, whether we realize it or not. Our minds are like sponges, absorbing everything around us. That's why it's important to surround ourselves with positive influences that will help us grow and become the best version of ourselves. So, 
How do we surround ourselves with positive influences? The first step is to identify the people in our lives who have a positive impact on us. These are the people who inspire us, motivate us, and push us to become better. They could be our family, friends, mentors, or even colleagues. The next step is to limit our exposure to negative influences. These are the people who constantly bring us down, discourage us, and drain our energy. They could be the naysayers, the complainers, or the ones who always see the glass as half empty. Now I'm not saying that we should completely cut these people out of our lives, but we should limit our interactions with them. Surrounding ourselves with positive influences also means immersing ourselves in positive environments. This could be attending seminars, workshops, or conferences where we can learn from successful and inspiring individuals. It could also mean joining a mastermind group or a community of like-minded individuals who share our goals and values. Now I know what some of you may be thinking, but Jim, what if I don't have any positive influences in my life? Well, my friend, it's time to go out and find them. You see, we are not limited to the people we already know. We can always expand our network and meet new people who can have a positive impact on our lives. One way to do this is by volunteering or getting involved in community service. Not only will you be giving back to society, but you'll also have the opportunity to meet new people and make a positive impact on their lives. Another way is by joining clubs or organizations that align with our interests and goals. This will not only help us expand our network, but also surround ourselves with like-minded individuals who can support and motivate us. Surrounding ourselves with positive influences also means being selective with the information we consume. In today's digital age, we are bombarded with information from various sources, and not all of it is positive. That's why it's important to be mindful of the content we consume, whether it's through social media, news outlets, or even the books we read. We should strive to feed our minds with positive and uplifting information that will help us grow and expand our mindset. Now I want to share with you a personal experience that highlights the power of positive influences. When I was just starting out in my career, I had the opportunity to work with a successful businessman who became my mentor. He was a positive influence in my life, constantly pushing me to grow and learn. He taught me valuable lessons about success, mindset, and personal development. And I can say without a doubt that he played a significant role in shaping me into the person I am today. But it's not just about finding positive influences. It's also about being a positive influence ourselves. We should strive to be the kind of person that others want to surround themselves with. We can do this by being kind, supportive, and encouraging towards others. We should also be willing to share our knowledge and experiences with others, just like my mentor did with me. Surrounding ourselves with positive influences is not just about achieving success. It's also about living a happy and fulfilling life. When we surround ourselves with positive people, we are more likely to adopt their positive mindset and outlook on life. We become more optimistic, resilient, and grateful for what we have. And as a result, we attract more positivity into our lives. Our mindset is not just a reflection of our reality. It can also be our biggest obstacle. Our thoughts and beliefs shape our actions, and our actions determine our results. So if we want to achieve success in any aspect of our lives, we must first master our mindset. And that brings me to goal setting. Setting goals is the foundation of personal development. It is the first step towards creating the life you desire. Without a clear destination in mind, how can we expect to reach our desired destination? Let me share with you a story. When I was 25 years old, I was working as a stock clerk in a small store. I was living paycheck to paycheck, and I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. One day, my mentor asked me a simple question. What do you want in life? And I couldn't answer that question. I had never thought about it before. That's when I realized that I needed to set goals for myself. So I sat down and wrote down a list of things I wanted to achieve. I wanted to become financially independent, travel the world, and impact people's lives. And let me tell you my friends, once I had a clear vision of what I wanted, everything changed. I started taking action towards my goals, and within a few years, I was able to achieve everything I had written down on that piece of paper. But here's the thing. Setting goals is not just about writing them down and forgetting about them. It's about creating a plan of action and consistently working towards them. Goals without action are just dreams. And dreams, my friends, are just fantasies. But when we combine our goals with consistent action, that's when we start to see real results. I know that setting goals can be intimidating for some of you. 
You may be afraid of failure or not knowing where to start. But let me tell you this. Failure is not the opposite of success. It's a part of success. We must embrace failure and learn from it. And as for not knowing where to start, let me give you a simple formula that has worked for me and countless others. First, be specific about what you want. Don't just say, I want to be rich. Instead say, I want to earn $1 million in the next five years. Be specific, and your mind will start to work towards making it a reality. Next, write down your goals. As I mentioned earlier, goals without writing them down are just dreams. Writing them down gives them power and holds you accountable. Then, set a deadline for each goal. This creates a sense of urgency and motivates you to take action. Once you have your goals written down, break them down into smaller actionable steps. This makes them less overwhelming and more achievable. And finally, take action every day towards your goals. It doesn't have to be a big action, even small steps count. The key is to be consistent and keep moving forward. Now I know some of you may be thinking, but Jim, what if I don't achieve my goals? Well my friends, I have a simple answer for that. Adjust and readjust. Life is not a straight line, it's full of twists and turns. And sometimes our goals may change, and that's okay. The important thing is to keep setting goals and taking action towards them. You see setting goals is not just about achieving them, it's about the journey. It's about becoming the best version of ourselves and constantly growing and evolving. And that, my friends, is the beauty of personal development. Now, to the number one way to master your mindset. Positive self-talk. I have spent decades studying and teaching personal development. And I can confidently say that this one practice has the power to transform your life in ways you never thought possible. So what is this powerful practice, you may ask? It is none other than positive self-talk. Yes, you heard me right. The way we talk to ourselves has a profound impact on our thoughts, emotions, and actions. And in order to achieve success and fulfillment in life, we must first master our mindset through positive self-talk. Now some of you may be skeptical. You may be thinking, how can talking to myself make any difference? But let me tell you, my friends, our thoughts and words have immense power. They shape our beliefs, which in turn shape our actions, and ultimately our results. Think about it. How many times have you talked yourself out of something? How many times have you let negative self-talk hold you back from pursuing your dreams? We are our own worst critics. And if we continue to feed ourselves with negative thoughts and words, we will never reach our full potential. On the other hand, positive self-talk has the power to uplift us, motivate us, and push us towards greatness. When we speak to ourselves with kindness, encouragement, and belief, we create a positive mindset that allows us to overcome challenges and achieve our goals. But let me be clear. Positive self-talk is not about being delusional or ignoring our problems. It is about acknowledging our struggles and choosing to focus on the solutions instead of dwelling on the negatives. It is about shifting our perspective and finding the good in every situation. So how can we practice positive self-talk? The first step is to become aware of our inner dialogue. Pay attention to the thoughts and words that run through your mind. Are they uplifting or self-defeating? Are they empowering or limiting? Once you become aware of your self-talk, you can start to change it. The second step is to replace negative self-talk with positive affirmations. Affirmations are powerful statements that we repeat to ourselves to reinforce positive beliefs. For example, instead of saying, I can't do this, say, I am capable, and I will figure it out. Instead of saying, I am not good enough, say, I am worthy, and I am enough. Now I know some of you may be thinking, but Jim, I don't believe these affirmations. And that is okay. It takes time and practice to change our beliefs. But here's the thing. Our thoughts and words have a way of becoming our reality. So even if you don't fully believe in your affirmations at first, keep repeating them. Eventually, your mind will start to believe them, and your actions will follow. The third step is to surround yourself with positivity. Our environment plays a huge role in our mindset. If we surround ourselves with negative people and situations, it's easy to fall into negative self-talk. But if we surround ourselves with positive and supportive individuals, it can uplift us and reinforce our positive self-talk. And finally, the most important step is to be patient and persistent. Mastering your mindset through positive self-talk is not a one-time thing. It's a daily practice. 
It takes time and effort to change our thoughts and beliefs. But I can assure you, it is worth it. In closing, my friends, the number one way to master your mindset is through positive self-talk. So let's commit to speaking kindly and positively to ourselves, and watch as our mindset and our lives change for the better. Thank you. In today's message, I want to talk to you about the power of your thoughts and how they can truly shape your life. We all have thoughts, but not all of us have mastered them, and that's okay. Because in this video, I'm going to share with you five practical ways to take control of your thinking and use it to your advantage. You see, our thoughts are like seeds that we plant in our minds. And just like a seed, they have the potential to grow into something beautiful or something destructive. The good news is, we have the power to choose which thoughts we want to nurture and which ones we want to weed out. I know that many of you may be struggling with negative thoughts, self-doubt, and limiting beliefs. But I want you to know that you are not alone. We all have our battles with our thoughts. But by listening to this message, you are taking the first step towards turning things around. So, get ready to learn how to master your thinking and create a life that you truly desire. Let's dive in. The fifth way to master your thinking is practicing gratitude. Now before I dive into this topic, let me ask you a question. How many of you wake up every morning feeling grateful for what you have in your life? How many of you take a moment each day to appreciate the blessings that surround you? I can bet that not many of you do. And that is why I'm here today to remind you of the power and importance of gratitude. You see, gratitude is not just a mere feeling or emotion. It is a way of life. It is a state of mind that can transform your entire being. It is the key to unlocking a life of abundance, happiness and success. But why is gratitude so important? Well, let me tell you a story. There was once a man who had everything. A successful career, a loving family, and a beautiful home. Yet, he was constantly unhappy and dissatisfied with his life. He always wanted more, and he never took the time to appreciate what he already had. One day, he met a wise man who told him, If you are not grateful for what you have, you will never be happy with what you get. These words struck a chord with the man, and he decided to change his perspective. He started practicing gratitude, and to his surprise, his life began to change. He became more content, more fulfilled, and more successful than ever before. And that, my friends, is the power of gratitude. You see, when you practice gratitude, you shift your focus from what you lack to what you have. You start to see the beauty in the little things, and you appreciate the people and things in your life more deeply. And when you are grateful, you attract more things to be grateful for. It's like a magnet that attracts positivity and abundance into your life. But let me tell you, gratitude is not just about saying thank you. It is about feeling thankful. It is about expressing your appreciation and acknowledging the goodness in your life. It is about counting your blessings, no matter how small they may seem. So how can you practice gratitude? Well, it's simple. First and foremost, start your day with gratitude. As soon as you wake up, take a moment to think about all the things you are grateful for. It could be something as simple as having a roof over your head or a warm cup of coffee. And before you go to bed, reflect on your day and think about the good things that happened to you. This will help you go to sleep with a positive mindset. Another way to practice gratitude is by keeping a gratitude journal. Every day, write down at least three things you are grateful for. It could be anything. A kind gesture from a stranger, a promotion at work, or a beautiful sunset. This will not only help you cultivate a grateful mindset, but it will also serve as a reminder of all the good things in your life when you are feeling down. You can also express your gratitude to others. Take the time to thank the people in your life who have made a positive impact. It could be your parents, your friends, your colleagues, or even a stranger who helped you in some way. Your words of appreciation can make someone's day and spread positivity in the world. Now I know what some of you may be thinking. But Jim, my life is not perfect. I have struggles, challenges, and setbacks. How can I be grateful for that? My friends, let me tell you, gratitude is not about denying your problems. It is about finding the silver lining in every situation. It is about learning from your struggles and growing from your challenges. It is about being grateful for the lessons they teach you and the strength they give you. In fact, I believe that the toughest times in our lives are the ones we should be most grateful for. They shape us into who we are and prepare us for the future. As the saying goes, smooth seas do not make skillful sailors. So, 
embrace your struggles and be grateful for the growth they bring. Now, I want to leave you with a challenge. For the next 21 days, I want you to practice gratitude every day. Write down three things you are grateful for, express your appreciation to someone, or simply take a moment to reflect on your blessings. And I guarantee you, after 21 days, you will see a shift in your mindset and your life. Now to number four. The fourth way to master your thinking is by setting goals and creating a plan. We all have dreams and aspirations, things that we want to achieve in our lives. But the sad truth is that most people never turn those dreams into reality. They remain just that. Dreams. Why is that? It's because they lack a clear direction and a plan to get there. As the saying goes, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Setting goals is the first step towards achieving success. It gives us a clear target to aim for and a purpose to work towards. Without goals, we are just wandering aimlessly through life, never truly reaching our full potential. Goals give us something to strive for, something to get excited about, and something to measure our progress against. But setting goals is not enough. We also need to have a plan in place to achieve those goals. A goal without a plan is just a wish. We must have a roadmap that will guide us towards our desired destination. A plan helps us break down our goals into smaller, more manageable tasks. It helps us stay focused and on track. It gives us a sense of direction and purpose. Now, I know some of you may be thinking, but Jim, I don't know how to set goals or create a plan. Well, let me tell you, it's not as complicated as you may think. The first step is to have a clear vision of what you want to achieve. Ask yourself, what do I want to accomplish in my life? Be specific and write it down. This will be your ultimate goal. Next, break down that goal into smaller, more achievable goals. These will be your short-term goals. For example, if your ultimate goal is to start your own business, your short-term goals could be to research the market, create a business plan, and save a certain amount of money. Once you have your short-term goals, it's time to create a plan to achieve them. This plan should include specific actions you need to take, and a timeline for when you want to achieve each goal. It's important to be realistic and give yourself enough time to accomplish each task. Remember, Rome wasn't built in a day. But setting goals and creating a plan is just the beginning. The real work comes in actually taking action towards your goals. You can have the best plan in the world, but if you don't take action, it's all for nothing. As the great Napoleon Hill once said, action is the real measure of intelligence. So my friends, I urge you to take action towards your goals. Don't wait for the perfect moment or for everything to fall into place. The perfect moment is now. The time is now. Don't let fear or doubt hold you back. Remember, success is not a matter of chance. It's a matter of choice. It's up to you to make the choice to take action towards your goals. And let me tell you, the journey towards achieving your goals will not be easy. There will be obstacles and challenges along the way. But don't let them discourage you. Embrace them as opportunities to learn and grow. As the saying goes, smooth seas do not make skillful sailors. It's through overcoming challenges that we become stronger and more resilient. Another important aspect of setting goals and creating a plan is to constantly review and adjust them. Life is not a straight line. It's full of twists and turns, and sometimes our goals may change, or our plans may need to be adjusted. Don't be afraid to adapt and make changes as needed. The important thing is to keep moving forward towards your ultimate goal. Now the third way to master your thinking is by surrounding yourself with positive people. Now I know what some of you may be thinking. Why is it so important to surround ourselves with positive people? Can't we just be positive on our own? Well, the answer is yes. We can be positive on our own. But it becomes much easier when we have a supportive and positive environment around us. As the saying goes, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. This is a powerful statement, and one that I believe holds a lot of truth. We are heavily influenced by the people we surround ourselves with, whether we realize it or not. Though it is crucial that we choose our company wisely. Think about it. If you surround yourself with negative, toxic people who constantly complain and bring you down, how do you think that will affect your mindset? It will be much harder for you to maintain a positive outlook when you are constantly bombarded with negativity. On the other hand, if you surround yourself with positive, motivated individuals who uplift and inspire you, it becomes much easier to maintain a positive mindset. So the question then becomes, how do we surround ourselves with positive people? Well, let me share with you a few ways that have worked for me and I believe will work for you as well. 
Firstly, be intentional about the people you spend time with. This may sound obvious, but oftentimes we don't realize the impact that certain people have on us until it's too late. Take a moment to reflect on the people in your life and ask yourself, do these people bring positivity into my life? Do they support and encourage me? Do they inspire me to be a better version of myself? If the answer to these questions is no, then it may be time to reevaluate the relationships in your life. Surrounding yourself with positive people also means being selective about the media you consume. In today's digital age, we are constantly bombarded with information, and it is up to us to filter out the negative and focus on the positive. Be mindful of the content you are consuming, whether it be on social media, television, or in books. Make sure that it aligns with your values and goals and contributes to your personal growth. Secondly, seek out like-minded individuals. It's important to surround yourself with people who share similar interests and goals as you. This not only creates a sense of camaraderie, but also provides a support system for you to lean on. When you have a group of people who are all working towards a common goal, it becomes much easier to stay motivated and positive. One of the best ways to find like-minded individuals is by joining groups or organizations that align with your interests. This could be a book club, a volunteer organization, or a fitness group. Not only will you meet new people, but you will also have the opportunity to learn from others and expand your knowledge and skills. Thirdly, be a positive influence yourself. We often forget that we have the power to influence those around us. By being a positive and uplifting person, you can inspire others to do the same. Your positive energy and attitude can be contagious, and you may find that people are naturally drawn to you because of it. In addition, by being a positive influence, you will attract positive people into your life. Like attracts like, and when you radiate positivity, you will naturally attract positive people into your circle. So, focus on being the best version of yourself, and watch as the right people come into your life. Lastly, don't be afraid to distance yourself from negative people. This can be a difficult step, especially if these negative people are friends or family members. But sometimes, in order to grow and thrive, we need to let go of relationships that no longer serve us. This doesn't mean that you have to completely cut these people out of your life, but it does mean setting boundaries and limiting your time with them. And now, to number two. The second way to master your thinking is by reading and learning. Now I know what some of you might be thinking. Reading, learning, that sounds boring and tedious. But let me tell you my friends, there is no greater investment than investing in yourself through reading and learning. As the saying goes, leaders are readers. You see the world is changing at a rapid pace, and in order to keep up with this ever-evolving world, we must continuously learn and adapt. The moment we stop learning, we stop growing, and the moment we stop growing, we start dying. Reading and learning are not just about acquiring knowledge, they're about gaining an edge over others, staying ahead of the game, and becoming the best version of yourself. Now you might be wondering, what should I read? Where should I start? My answer to that is simple. Read anything and everything that interests you. Whether it's books, articles, blogs, or even podcasts, as long as it's something that sparks your curiosity, go for it. But I must warn you, not all reading material is created equal. Be selective in what you read. Choose books that will challenge you, inspire you, and teach you something new. As my mentor Earl Schof used to say, don't wish it was easier, wish you were better, don't wish for fewer problems, wish for more skills. Reading and learning also allow us to gain new perspectives. We all have our own biases and beliefs, but by reading and learning from different sources, we open ourselves up to new ideas and ways of thinking. This not only expands our knowledge but also helps us become more open-minded and understanding individuals. Furthermore, reading and learning help us to develop critical thinking skills. In today's world, where information is readily available at our fingertips, it's important to be able to sift through the noise and determine what is true and what is not. By reading and learning, we sharpen our ability to think critically and make informed decisions. But it's not just about gaining knowledge and skills, it's also about personal growth. Reading and learning allow us to reflect on our own thoughts and beliefs. They help us to identify areas where we need to improve and give us the tools to do so. As Warren Buffett once said, the more you learn, the more you'll earn. Now some of you might be thinking, I don't have time to read, I'm too busy. But let me tell you, we all have the same 24 hours in a day. 
It's how we choose to use those hours that makes all the difference. Instead of spending hours scrolling through social media or binge-watching TV shows, use that time to read and learn. Make it a priority. And for those of you who say, I don't like reading, it's not for me. Well, I have news for you. Reading is a skill, and like any other skill, it can be developed and improved upon. Start small, set a goal to read for just 15 minutes a day, and gradually increase it. You'll be surprised at how much you can learn in just a short amount of time. But reading and learning are not just about personal growth. They're also about leaving a legacy. As the saying goes, a book is a gift you can open again and again. By reading and learning, we not only better ourselves, but also have the opportunity to share our knowledge and experiences with others through writing or teaching. And let me tell you, there is no greater feeling than knowing that you have positively impacted someone's life through your words and teachings. As Maya Angelou said, when you learn, teach. When you get, give. Now, it is an honor to stand before you today and share with you the number one way to master your thinking. This is a topic that has been near and dear to my heart for many years, and I am grateful for the opportunity to share my insights with you. As we embark on this journey of personal development, it is important to remember that our thoughts create our reality and determine our level of success. Therefore, it is crucial that we learn to master our thoughts in order to create the life that we desire. So, what is the number one way to do this? It is simple, yet powerful, and it is something that each and every one of us can do. The number one way to master your thinking is to practice positive self-talk. You see, our minds are like gardens. Whatever seeds we plant in them will grow and flourish. If we plant seeds of doubt, fear, and negativity, we will reap a harvest of the same. But if we plant seeds of positivity, confidence, and belief, we will reap a harvest of abundance and success. This is where positive self-talk comes in. It is the act of consciously choosing to speak to ourselves in a positive and empowering manner. It is the practice of replacing negative thoughts with positive ones, and it is a habit that can transform our lives. Now I know what some of you may be thinking. But Jim, I can't control my thoughts. They just pop into my head. And I understand where you are coming from. Our minds are constantly bombarded with external stimuli, and it can be challenging to filter out the negative thoughts. But let me tell you, it is not impossible. Think of it this way. If someone came up to you and started spewing negativity and criticism, would you just stand there and take it? Of course not. You would either walk away or stand up for yourself and defend your worth. So why do we allow our own minds to do the same thing to us? It is time to take control of our thoughts and choose to speak to ourselves in a positive and empowering manner. And the best way to do this is through positive self-talk. Now, I want to share with you three simple steps to practice positive self-talk and master your thinking. Step 1. Become aware of your thoughts. The first step in any change is awareness. We must become aware of our thoughts in order to change them. So, I challenge you to pay attention to your thoughts throughout the day. Are they mostly positive or negative? Are they empowering or limiting? Once you become aware of your thoughts, you can start to make changes. Step 2. Replace negative thoughts with positive ones. When a negative thought pops into your head, acknowledge it, and then consciously choose to replace it with a positive one. For example, if you catch yourself thinking, I can't do this, replace it with, I am capable, and I will figure it out. It may feel unnatural at first, but with practice, it will become second nature. Step 3. Affirm yourself daily. It is not enough to just replace negative thoughts with positive ones. We must also actively affirm ourselves on a daily basis. This can be done through daily affirmations or simply speaking positive statements to ourselves throughout the day. The key is to make these affirmations specific, positive, and in the present tense. For example, I am confident, capable, and worthy of success. Now some of you may be thinking, but Jim, this all sounds great in theory, but does it really work? And my answer to that is yes, it does. I have seen the power of positive self-talk in my own life and in the lives of countless others. It has the ability to transform our thoughts, our beliefs, and ultimately our reality. But don't just take my word for it. I encourage you to try it for yourself. Make a commitment to practice positive self-talk for the next 30 days and see how it impacts your life. I can guarantee that you will see a difference. 
As we wrap up, I want to leave you with one final thought. Our thoughts are powerful. They have the ability to shape our reality and determine our level of success. So let's make a conscious effort to master our thinking by practicing positive self-talk. Let's plant seeds of positivity, confidence and belief in our minds, and watch them grow into a life of abundance and success. Thank you.